Okay, hi. So this is Carrie Johnston, and I am filming today on the traditional territory of Champagne and Ajak First Nations in beautiful Dakokara Haines Junction. And uh, my guest today is Miles Hogan. And Miles is joining us from Kwanlin Whitehorse in the traditional territory of Ta'an Kuchin Council and Kwanlin Dun First Nation. Welcome, Miles. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Okay, so tell us a little bit about who you are as an entrepreneur. What do you do? Yeah, so uh, as you said, I'm Miles Hogan. Uh, my brother and I, Tanner, he, he unfortunately wasn't able to make it today, uh, but we run a local brand uh, called Yukon Built here in Whitehorse, based out of Whitehorse. Um, we've sort of grown up in family business, so we're also involved in a number of other retail shops um, locally in town, but sort of our, our entrepreneurial sort of vision and goals as we move forward is building this brand called Yukon Built, which is all sort of based around the Yukon, the community we live in, and sort of branding almost like a lifestyle brand of, uh, around everything that the Yukon is and has to offer. So in the simplest way, you're, you're an apparel company. We're an apparel company. Yeah, everything from hoodies and hats, as you can see, um, and sort of branching out to di different items uh, as we grow and working on some outerwear and things like that, hats, toques. Um, yeah, it's been fun. It's, it's, a lot, it's allowed us almost a um, sort of a creative outlet uh, in, in a way through apparel to sort of build a business and build a, a community around. So. Awesome. Okay, so what have you learned about your business model during the pandemic? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's been challenging uh, as it has been for any business locally. Uh, I think a, a big thing we've learned and we've sort of been learning as we started, we started in 2017, so we're three going on four years into this business, um, is the amazing community that we have up here that, that is so supportive and, and so um, willing to sort of get behind businesses and brands and, and are really proud to be able to do so. Um, so it's been amazing for us to not only see that during this COVID period, um, but through these three, four years that we've been building this brand. Um, it, it, it's really sort of inspired us in, in a way that we just want to keep building, keep growing. Um, and even though we are, you know, we're, we're all, we've been so uh, separate and so um, sort of isolated in a physical sense since COVID started, a real strong community we have is our online presence, which has always sort of been a core of what we do. So we're lucky that the transition has been fairly smooth, I guess you could say, um, through our Instagram and Facebook pages, being able to reach people and then having a, a fairly strong online presence through just our website, uh, where people could still continue to purchase and buy and support um, has been really important for us and has allowed us to sort of continue relatively smoothly. Um, obviously there's the ebbs and flows that, that every business has had at this time, um, but having that online presence has been super important for us as well to stay connected uh, with, with our customers, with their audience, with, with the community that we're building. So hmm. it's, uh, yeah, it's been good. Have you had to make any tweaks or modifications in your online presence because of the pandemic or has it been sort of keeping on with what you've been doing before? It's mostly been, I would say, keeping on. I think maybe just putting a little more focus onto it um, and being a little more uh, attentive to our online presence and, and not sort of just waiting or, or accepting for people to engage, sort of actively trying to create that engagement with people online uh, has been important, important to us. So, so it's been more the same, um, continuing what we're doing, just putting a little more emphasis on the online presence, I would say. Mm -hmm. And if you don't mind me asking without revealing too many details, sort of what sort of, in terms of your online marketplace, is that mostly sort of Yukoners purchasing? Is it national? Is it international? Like, do you have an ish percentages for us to understand? Yeah. In terms of percentage, it might be hard. Um, what we've found really good and positive through this whole pandemic um, is being able to have an online presence where people have access to our products, whatever we might be offering, um, but also having a local option. So instead of just shipping, someone can purchase from us online, but have a local pickup option. So even if they don't want to come into a physical store, we can, we've can we sort of been able to do the curbside pickup. Um, and that's allowed us to sort of continue sales from a distance, even though that customer might be local, um, we've had the ability to still stay connected with them. So I'd, I'd say that is um, 
the bulk of what we do is still local, um, either ourselves through our online presence. Um, we now have a small retail presence as well as a couple of retailers uh, across the Yukon. So I would say that's still probably 80% of our business is Yukoners, um, either local or throughout the territory. Um, but a growing market for us is um, nationally and internationally, which has been really interesting as well. Uh, and quite exciting too, because the Yukon, as we're all learning and sort of are experiencing, the Yukon does have a special allure to it. Um, so whether it's someone that's been, that has visited in the past, uh, used to live here and has since moved away, they all sort of still want a little piece of that Yukon with them wherever they go. And Yukon built as a brand, I feel like we've, we've been very fortunate in, to sort of tap into that. Whereas someone that might now be living in Toronto and Whitehorse or Dawson might have been home 10 years ago, they've now come across our brand and say, oh, I miss it so badly. Now I have that little piece of home uh, with me. So we've been shipping across Canada um, to the States, to Europe, a couple orders to Australia. So it, it, it's small comparatively to the numbers we're doing locally, um, but it's been really neat to connect to uh, a grander audience internationally as well and sort of connect th through the Yukon um, with people everywhere, everywhere in the world, so. That, that is really exciting. Yeah. yeah. I was, at, I was at the post office the other day and, and saw someone from Yukon built shipping some stuff out internationally. So I was excited for oh, you. Awesome. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Uh, okay. So what are you learning about leadership as you're sort of like, you know, looking at expansion within your business at a, a time when we're feeling like there's restriction? Yeah, that, that's a really good question and kind of a tough one. Um, as, a, as a business owner, as a business leader, Right now, for Yukon Built, it's fairly small scale in terms of being a leader as part of a team, as it's just my brother and I still. So we're sort of a, a two-man team, uh, just bouncing ideas off each other. So in terms of being a leader within the business, um, it's sort of just my brother and I sort of stepping up to the plate when, when something needs to be done. Um, so in that sense, but I think it's also important, not just in our business, but any entrepreneur or business person in this community community to sort of be stepping up as a leader in the community um, and we I think we've seen that with a lot of businesses supporting the other businesses supporting local initiatives um, so I think that's been a really important step for Tanner and I um, is to start taking on the role of being a leader in our own small way in the community um, so sort of collaborating on different projects or um, we we were able to create a sort of a new collection, which we, we called the Yukon Built for This collection, um, which allowed us, so all proceeds from that collection went towards supporting local initiatives, um, like the food bank, like the, the animal shelter, things like that. So I think being a, a community leader is, is something that is always been super important to us and we want to sort of grow in that role. Um, so I think that would probably be the biggest step we have started taking is sort of getting out there more in the community as a leader, as, as a collaborator, um, and sort of see everyone thrive together in this community. So uh, I think that's been important for us. Oh, that's certainly the message that we hear from so many entrepreneurs on this series is, you know, it's, it's about building relationships, finding your opportunities to collaborate when, you know, when these challenging times come, it's, it's about how we build together. Totally. Mm. So how are you thinking about your business a little bit differently? Kind of like what's on the horizon as we head into this next couple of years, knowing that this pandemic is, you know, yeah. with us? Um, for us, I think it's continue building on the block we've already sort of been working on the last few years. Um, it, it's from the start, Yukon Built has been about community. It's about building something that is hopefully representative of what people feel this community is all about, what the Yukon's all about. Um, sort of being adventurous and resilient. Um, so it's sort of continue building on those blocks. Uh, as we touched on already, the online presence is going to be super important for us um, to continue to reach not only local markets, um, but potentially people outside um, that are looking to connect with the brand. So sort of working on that online presence through social media, um, improving our website so people can continue to access our products. Um, in an easy and, and sort of visual way uh, that sort of proves that or it looks like we know what we're doing. 
uh, and an online presence from an outside perspective. Um, so yeah, I, I would say for us, it's continuing to build on the, on the blocks that we've been working on um, and, and sort of staying focused. It's in times like this, it sort of allows you to step back for a second and reevaluate and refocus because it's easy in business to get distracted or start veering off. And when something like this happens, when you have to be so laser focused to continue your, your staying on the right path to say, stay sustainable. Um, cause there's a lot of businesses that, that won't necessarily make it through. Um, so it's, it's just sort of always continuing to reevaluate, um, sort of our processes and, and how we're approaching different things and, and making sure we are part of the community in a way that, that helps us to continue and helps us to sustain uh, is going to be continue to be important with COVID or pandemic, whether that continues to be or not. I think that's really important is sort of taking the things we've learned in the last few months and continue to implement those um, sort of in a very focused way. Yeah, I think uh, in a way your, you know, your business model is resilient because you had such a strong online presence and, and you know, sort of built your brand from within there. We've got, you know, about 30% of Yukon businesses that have a, a web presence or so I think a lot of businesses did have to um, quickly on board and look at their, you know, look at their back end, look at how their POS and their website and all these things start to integrate and kind of start from scratch in many places. We've, sure. we've heard, yeah, heard from absolutely. a lot of businesses that they, you know, they really had to focus on the back end. Do you have any insights or wisdom or for anybody uh, like who's, who's starting out and, and looking to build a, a, like a new company, what to think about in terms of how to build processes? Uh, from a back end sort of point of view? From any point of view. Yeah, I mean, a lot of it's trial and error. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a learning process the whole way through. Uh, nothing's perfect, nothing's easy. I think we've been through a lot of trial and error and continue to be. Um, I would say from a backend perspective, especially if you're trying to create a, a backend which is sort of has a strong online presence, um, we, I guess just as an example, we use the Shopify platform, which allows us to integrate from a website point of view. Um, I can be selling from my cell phone, from my laptop, from a retail um, location. So that sort of integration has simplified a lot for us where our inventory management, um, our sales, everything is through one program. Um, so that creates some efficiencies in itself, having it all tracked in one place, because I know it's easy to have this part inventory over here and your sales point of system over here and whatever it might be, um, it, it can get confusing, and difficult and sort of convoluted. So I guess in that sense, sometimes, I mean, finding a strong program on the back end is important. Um, and sort of having a cons consistency is all, also key. Um, knowing that you have a back end that you can rely on. It's so important. Um, and it's something we've learned, especially over the last few months, having a strong back end and having those building blocks in place. So if something does unexpectedly occur, it's not going to come crumbling down. You know, you have a strong foundation you can rely on that you've built those blocks and put them in place so that you might have to lean on them a little harder, uh, as, as you go through these rough points. Um, but knowing you can trust that back end is super important to know that you can rely on it and sort of continue to work on those building blocks. Um, so that, that's super important. And some, something we continue to work on is building out that back end to know it's something that is strong and we can rely on. And then you can push forward with your marketing and your sales, but you have to have that back end built up in a strong way before you can sort of take that next step and push out into the world, sort of the front end sales kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, lifelong learning comes up a lot in this sort of series too. things that like new entrepreneurs are sort of learning or like a new skill acquisition. Have there been any for you, like whether it's personal or professional? Yeah. I mean, every day, <laughs> <laughs> every day is, is something new, uh, which I think is part of the draw for me. And I know for Tanner, um, to be an entrepreneur, to, to build businesses is we, we love the constant learning. Um, from a business and a personal point of view, there's always something new that's coming up every day. Uh, and, and even when people ask like, Oh, like, what do you do in a typical day? I'm like, depends if you ask me yesterday or tomorrow, it's going to look different. 
uh, which is part of the struggle sometimes, but also part of the excitement. Um, for me, I think, especially in these last few months, a big thing for me has been um, learning better time management and structure, I would say, has been super important, uh, especially when there's a lot of working from home or whatever it might be, structure and having time allotted for certain things. Uh, it's easy to get overwhelmed when you have a, a list of two dozen things to do and, you, and when you're pinging back and forth between multiple things. So I think for me, a huge thing has been being creating structure in my day and blocking off time in certain days for certain activities or for certain tasks without it's certain it might be times where I literally I'll, I'll put my phone on silent and put it away because with those notifications constantly distracting me it's really hard to get certain things done um, so that's been huge for me is is sort of knowing or allowing myself give myself permission to step back for a moment and say you know what I can block off an hour to do whatever the, this task might be the, the business, the brand, it's not going to blow up if I don't get back to someone within a few minutes. Um, so that, that's been super important. That's, that's more maybe on a personal level too, not, not just business, but trying to find that balance because um, it it's easy to get overwhelmed with, with the day-to-day -day task, especially as, uh, as a partnership between my brother and I, when you're taking on everything from packing the orders to responding to online messages to maintaining the website to balancing the accounting and the background to fulfilling orders. Um, it's, it's, it's a lot and it can be overwhelming. So that, that structure throughout a day, um, throughout a week, throughout a month is, is super important. And I'm just learning to get better at that now. <laughs> I, I think it's like, it's a lifelong, it's a lifelong thing. Totally. Yeah. Especially on the accounting side of things. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with that. <laughs> um, so has that been part of your wellness practice or what, like what other things have been kind of keeping you grounded or, or well during this period of time? Yeah. Uh, that's been something I've been learning too, is, is trying to find a bit of balance between work and um, non-work. I, I would say I probably don't have a lot of balance right now in my life, but it, it's something I'm working on um, outside of. So on a personal wellness um, kind of perspective, it's, it's just small things going exercise even if something was going for a walk in the evening, it could be 9 p.m. You're wrapping up your day and taking that 30 minutes to go for a walk. Um, I've started meditating for the first time. That, that's something I've started doing in the last three months, um, which has been super valuable to me, even if it's 10 or 15 minutes when I first get up in the morning uh, to sort of ground and start that day. Because otherwise I'm up, I'm, first thing I do is I look at my phone and it's instant notifications, instant emails that I'm trying to get back to. And sort of that starts my day on, a bit of a spiral, a bit of a overwhelming sort of um, mode. So I've now started a bit of a better morning routine that starts it off a little more balanced, um, which has been super important for me to sort of start my day on a probably a better leg. Uh, so on a personal point of view, that, that's been huge is, is creating a bit of, of a better morning routine. Um, and yeah. Hmm. Those are all great, great insights. Yeah. Um, so the Yukon kind of has gone through a bit of a reset and, you know, we're talking about entering into phase three soon of sort of our reopening strategy and, and just wondering, you know, what are your hopes for what, you know, happens in the Yukon economy over the next, you know, couple of years? What are, what are the values? What are, what are you, what are your, your dreams? Yeah. Um, that's a really good question as well. I think, I think for me is to continue to see collaborative efforts, um, in the Yukon between businesses, between businesses and government, whatever it is to help grow, sustain, enable people to start businesses if they want to. Um, I think it's Whitehorse, the Yukon in general is such a great place to start a business um, as an entrepreneur, as a business person. I think there's a lot of opportunity. So I'd love to see that continue to grow through places like uh, Northlight, the Innovation Center, and you construct um, different things like that uh, seem like a great catalyst to sort of start um, people on their entrepreneurial journey. Um, and I hope continue people continue to buy local, um, whether that's on small businesses or the local coffee roasters or whatever it might be. Um, it's, it's super important to help support the local community. And I think we're super lucky up here. I really noticed it um, 
for our businesses, we've heard it from other businesses, that the Yukon really seems to want to and enjoys supporting local business. And I hope that continues because it's such a strong community to be able to support your, it's a small community, but it's a strong community that's willing to sort of support your neighbor. Um, and I love that. And I, we feel super lucky to be in a place that, that does that. And we, I even feel in some of our other businesses outside of Yukon Built on a retail setting, um, we probably don't, we, we took a, a, a steep dip at, at the initial onset of, of COVID. Um, the retail sales got crushed anywhere you ask for a little while, but we were starting to see some normalcy coming back um, and almost some growth in the local market. We're, we're seeing probably people coming out that weren't necessarily um, shopping local before or, or not necessarily for a certain product locally that are easy to access online. Um, so I hope that continues as well um, to see that sort of from the community. It's been awesome. Like we feel so, so um, lucky to be in a community that does already do that. Uh, so I hope that continues as well. That's awesome. Any sort of like, you know, worldview shifts, major aha moments that happened for you over the past couple of months? In terms of aha moments, I think for me, it's just a continuation of being so blown away by, by the people we're surrounded with up here um, and sort of feeling that how fortunate we are. It, it's sort of an everyday thing. Every time we get an online order, right? Anytime someone comes into the shop and is excited about our brand or, or something like that. Um, it's sort of a continuous moment of like, it's pretty cool. It's pretty amazing that someone is willing to make a purchase from us. Uh, something what we've created and sort of put all of ourselves into and they choose to spend their dollars with us. It's sort of a constant aha moment for us. Like, like it, it's a really rewarding feeling um, that we really don't get through anything from anything else in a business world. Um, so I think it's sort of a, an everyday thing. It's, it's a continuation of being blown away by the people that are willing to support um, local businesses or, or any kind of business uh, that someone's created for themselves um, has been really amazing. So I, 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 I would say that's sort of the biggest thing for us is, is the constant sort of, yeah, just can't believe how, how supportive people have been and, and sort of a, attached and understood and sort of appreciate what we've been building um, and want to be a part of that. So that, that's been amazing. Mm -hmm. That is amazing. Yeah. Any sort of songs, podcasts, books, movies that are getting you through? Yeah, I wish this is when Tanner should be here with me. He's like the podcast guru. He, he's, he could list off a dozen of them right now. Um, we, we obviously listen to him more than me. He, he's, he's good at getting on that. Uh, we, a lot of our podcasts and books are quite business focused. Um, so there's been some good ones. I'm currently reading one called the infinite game, um, by Simon Sinek, which is really interesting and sort of how to build a business with an infinite mindset, not just short term goals, but thinking, how can you build something and create something bigger than yourself? Um, and how that will ultimately sustain a business, not just for yourself, but hopefully future generations. Um, so that's been, that's been really a really good one to dig into. Um, come on, Tanner. What, 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 would, what would Tanner recommend? <laughs> <laughs> I, I know he's got all, ki all kinds of podcasts queued up, but I would say just that that's in general. Um, reading podcasts, whatever it might be, something to sort of open your mind to possibly different perspectives or they, they, a lot of times that's where you get the aha moment. It's like, ah, oh, you know what? Even if it's a business totally unrelated to what we're doing, um, it might be that little aha moment. Like maybe we could approach it that way or try something different. Um, and also just, I think it's important as a, as a business person, as an entrepreneur, sometimes to listen or read or whatever it might be to something that's not business related and sort of allow your mind to escape into something else. Um, to get that healthy business or that healthy mindset. Because otherwise, there you go, my mind's always on business. Uh, <laughs> so I think that's super important as well to allow to have some balance between that as well. Uh, as well. Oh, that's been great. The great advice. Any closing words, any final thoughts before we sign off today? Um, I guess, first of all, just thank you. Thank you for putting this together and sort of connecting with other us and other local entrepreneurs and sort of um, getting this message out there of what people are going through and sort of what it looks like to be a, a Yukon based entrepreneur right now. Um, but yeah, I, I would just say 
thank you everyone um, for, for supporting local, for supporting Yukon Built. It's been an amazing ride. Um, we're excited about what's coming in the future and want to continue building um, this brand around the community and all the, the love and energy we feel from them. Um, and yeah, we're, we're looking forward to where we can take and hopefully we're on the upswing of this, this whole pandemic situation and continue to grow um, together with everyone else in this community. So. Awesome. Thanks so much for your time today, Miles. Bye. Yes, thank you very much. Take care.